Good morning, everyone. It's Anifa Menon from HeartHealthBrainHealth.com, encouraging healthy grieving and mindful actions. Today, my morning thoughts have all been focused on the contemplation of flexibility and stiffness. And I don't mean in a dirty way, <laughs> although I'm sure I could uh, talk about that a little bit later. I would love to draw your attention to the stiffness of the mind. And a lot of people, when people are thinking about stiffness, they think about the body. And of course, your muscles, tendons, ligaments, bones uh, can feel stiff at times. They feel like they're not so willing to move. And most people know that, oh, if I stretch things out and just get a little bit of flexibility in my body, I feel better. And it's true. So the body movement then helps the mind. But of course, I focus on the mind and I wanted to let you know today that the opposite is possible too. So changing how we're thinking of things and being more flexible in our thought process really presents us with more flexibility in the body. So I came across a great quotation that kind of touches on this. It's by Geetha Iyengar, and this quotation says, whenever we find stiffness in the body, our mind should be especially supple. It is never the stiffness in our bodies that limits our practice, it is always the stiffness of the mind. And this is true, right? So let's say someone even knows that they should stretch because they need to. Maybe they've just had a surgery. Maybe they've just had an injury. Whatever has happened and it stopped them from moving, they might know, I should move more. Yet, if the mind is stuck, they'll say, no, I just don't feel like it. Everything's just too painful. And it's probably true, yet a bit of movement will help. So if anyone has had any whether chronic illness or aging family members or friends, you will see that a lot of times people will say, I don't feel like moving. And it's true, they don't, because things will be not so comfortable. But of course, healthcare professionals, physiotherapists, occupational therapists, myself, um, are aware that nurses are aware that the body needs to move a little bit, get the circulation going, get things flowing a little bit better. And as we do that, the mind is helped to move too. And now, of course, if a person is very stuck, and they didn't want to exercise and they suddenly are forced to, encouraged to, and they might still finish that with, ah, it didn't feel good at all and I don't feel good now and it will not help them do this the next time. And the more times they stop themselves from moving forward this way, the more time their body will get comfortable in feeling stationary and stiff. And so I was thinking about how this affects people and how this we can look at from a slightly different perspective too. And this, I was thinking about how oftentimes we help people in those situations. So I came across this quotation by Christy Williams and it says, we cripple people who are capable of walking because we choose to carry them. We cripple people who are capable of walking because we choose to carry them. So let's say, Sometimes if you're seeing someone who is really not in a good space and lying in a bed, it could be someone who's got depression, or it could be someone who's just had a really not good day, someone who's just had an injury, someone who's just had a surgery, and we might say, yeah, you should rest. You know what? You feel their pain, and it's through compassion that you say, you should rest. I know that's what you feel like doing, and yeah, that just do that, right? And we're carrying them through that time, right? except it's not strengthening the person, right? So we know that as long as that body is stationary, it's not moving forward. Now we can do the same thing with the mind. So if we start saying to someone, oh, you should just uh, not move, that's, that's okay. Now this is again linked with movement. How about if we think about someone who's really set in their ways? And I'm sure we've all known these people. <laughs> and God forbid that I've been one. <laughs> I suspect we've all been in these situations where we're really set in our ways. And in those times, it's not so easy to move in any directions, right? It's, it's, it has to be like this. And unless it's like this, I'm not moving. And that's where people get stuck in life. So remember the first quotation was about the stiffness in our bodies that limits our practice, right? Because of the stiffness of the mind. Our practice is the practice of life. It's about living life joyfully comfortably, easily, right? And yet we ourselves, our own mind will often limit this movement of ease. So very useful for us to be consciously aware whether we're doing it to someone else, even out of good intention, or whether we're doing it to ourselves, where we do do this quite often if we sit and think about it. 
So I came across this other quotation, and again, I want you to remember that this applies to all areas of life. So it could apply in work, where we've seen where there are bosses or managers that can be really strict about things have to be this way. I want you to do it this way. And when we see that, we also see a lot of loss of employees, right? And of course, when there's a little bit more flexibility, there's a lot more employee retention. But we can see this in workplaces right now where there's a little bit more flexibility in people working from home right now, which is fantastic. Can't believe it took this major virus to get us to think this way, right? So this quotation by Mark Nepo that I wanted to share says, the glass blower knows while in the heat of beginning, any shape is possible. Once hardened, the only way to change is to break. Okay, so let's read that again. The glass blower knows while in the heat of beginning, any shape is possible. Once hardened, the only way to change is to break. And imagine if a person is really stuck in their ways and ways that are not working, the only way to change that is to break break that pattern, right? So of course, you know that I work with brain retraining and I help people break patterns. But at the same time, we have to be consciously aware of what are we doing to ourselves? What is helping us? What is not helping us? And that flexibility and adaptability really does help us. So I thought I'd finish with one more quotation to kind of encourage us to do this. And of course, I'd love for you to see areas in your life that you see that, wow, I'm really flexible in this. So let's say it could be when you get together with friends that they all want to eat at uh, different restaurants and you're flexible. It doesn't matter where you go. You're just happy to be with friends. And that's very useful if you're able to see what is the purpose for which I'm doing what I'm doing, right? So if you're going for lunch with friends, it could be to unite with those friends, right? But a lot of people can move into the, but I'm not going to go to a Chinese restaurant. I'm not going to go to a Thai restaurant. I'm not going to go to an Indian restaurant. I want to go to an Italian restaurant, whatever it is, right? So they're really stuck. That's well, because I don't like any of those other things not flexible, right? And then what's lost is the whole purpose of meeting with friends was to meet with the friends. It wasn't really the food, right? So that's very important for us to recognize that this happens in all areas of our life. So I came across this Lao Tzu quote that I really like too, that I'll end this video with. It says, plants are born tender and pliant, dead, they are brittle and dry. Thus, whoever is stiff and inflexible is a disciple of death. Whoever is soft and yielding is a disciple of life. The hard and stiff will be broken. The soft and supple, supple will prevail. So beautiful, right? Now it sounds kind of not so easy. But have you seen people even on their deathbeds that are laughing and joking and so happy to see people visiting them and just saying, well, you know, at least I can do this, or at least I can you know, feed myself, even if they've lost so many functions in their body. That is a supple brain. It's a supple mind, right? And then there's people who will lie there, let's say on their deathbeds, and saying, well, I don't like this nurse, and I don't like this room, and I don't like this bed, and I can't sleep. And it's different people and different minds, right? The biggest thing to remember is that we are training our brains throughout our lives. And you are training yourself consciously or not consciously about who you want to be over time. Be who you want to be over time now, because unless you have practice in it, you will not remember when you really need it. So I wish you a fabulous day ahead. I hope you can think about this and think about one area of your life that you realize that I'm really flexible in this. I'm really happy. You might think of another area where I'm kind of stiff in this area and I should kind of relax, right? So in that, and I, again, am not talking about sexuality, although one day I might. Have a great day ahead. I hope you remember, transform your mind and transform your life. Have a great day, everyone.